Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a problem from Spanish Math Olympiads. x and y are integers, p is a prime number, and we have the equation p times the quantity x plus y equals x times y. So we're going to be looking for integer solutions. And p is a prime number, it's basically any prime number, including the 2. So let's go ahead and expand the left hand side, and we're going to be getting the following. Now I want to use Simon here, just like I used in another video, because Simon is very helpful in these situations. Let's go ahead and subtract everything from x, y, and this is going to equal 0. So I'm going to take out x here, and then here I want to take out p, a negative p, but I do need y minus p, which means I'm adding p squared to both sides. Make sense? Because if you distribute this, you're going to get negative p. p times negative p equals p squared. So we added p squared to both sides. And this makes it factorable, thanks to Simon. x minus p times y minus p equals p squared. Now one of the things you need to remember here is that p is prime. Okay, great. So there's only certain ways you can factor this expression. And what are they? And by the way, remember that we're not just looking for positive integer solutions but any integer solution. So let's consider that when we do the solutions. So think about p squared, something like p squared. That can only be factored, well, how many factors does p squared have, right? p squared from the, uh, you know, counting rules only has three, because we're supposed to add two to two plus one. So it only has three divisors. So that means that only three things can go, and they are, they are one, p and p squared. Of course, we're considering the positive divisors in this case, but we're going to be writing both uh, for the solutions. So one way to factor this is then, uh, p squared can be factored as, you know, p squared times 1. That's one of the ways to do it. Or we can do, of course, we're going to switch around later. We can do p times p. We can do negative p times negative p, since negatives are allowed. Or we can do negative p squared with negative 1. So basically I have those following methods for factoring this type of expression. Let's go ahead and consider each one and then we're going to write the solutions and then we're going to be looking at some specific examples. Okay? So let's go ahead and start with the p squared and 1. So this means that x minus p can be p squared and at the same time y minus p can be 1. From here x equals p squared plus p and y equals p plus 1. So that means that those are the possible values for x and y when p is a prime number, which also means that they can switch around because p squared times 1 is the same as 1 times p squared. Okay? So I can safely say that x is equal to, well, maybe we can do the switches at the end. Okay. Now for the second situation, we have x minus p can be p and y minus p can be p as well at the same time. From here we get x equals 2p or not 2p, that didn't work y equals 2p. Okay, so that's just another another set of solutions. And now let's consider negative p and negative p. Let's see what happens from there. x minus p is negative p, y minus p is negative p. From here we get x equals 0 and y equals 0. The only numerical value because we don't know what p is, we're just solving it in the general case. And last but not least, we have the x minus p is equal to negative p squared and y minus p is equal to negative 1. From here we get x equals p minus p squared and y equals p minus 1. By the way, p minus p squared is going to be a negative quantity, but y equals p minus 1 is not going to be negative. And that's quite possible in our scenario. So we got, we got those four cases. Let's go ahead and write the solutions, uh, you know, all together as ordered pairs. And I'm also go, going to consider the uh, switches with x and y. Okay, so our first order pair is going to look like this then, p squared plus p and p plus 1, p squared plus p and p plus 1. Oops, that should be an ordered pair, p squared plus p and p plus 1. And then of course we can switch them around and write it as p plus 1 with p squared plus p. So that's my first ordered pair. My second ordered pair is going to be 2p and 2p, but they don't switch around because it's going to be the same thing. So I got 2p, 2p, and this is going to be my solution set. And then we got the 0, 0. Again, they're not going to switch around, so it's just going to be 0, 0. And then we got the 
the last one, which is p minus p squared with p minus 1, or p minus 1 with p minus p squared. And those are going to be all the solutions to this equation. Now, I said that I was going to look at some particular cases. Let's go ahead and look at those. So, for example, if you have, our original equation was, remember, it was p times the quantity x plus y. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. p times the quantity x plus y is equal to xy. So if you say that, for example, okay, I want p to be 2, all right? So I want xy is equal to 2x plus 2y, something like this. In which case, you're going to have the following solution. Like 2 squared is going to be 4, so 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. So 6, 3 is going to be a solution. Of course, 3, 6 is another one. Then you can talk about 4, 4. You can talk about 0, 0, right? So on and so forth. So all these are going to be valid solutions. P minus P squared is going to be, by the way, uh, 2 minus 4, which is going to be negative 2. P minus 1 is going to be 1. And if you switch around, you're going to get 1, negative 2. So for this particular case, we get these solutions. One of the interesting things about solving an equation like this one in general is we can basically replace p with anything we want. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.